Good day, everyone. This is Linda Como on behalf of the 2015 North American Constellations Conference coming up November 12th to 15th. And uh, today I have uh, uh, Bill Mantle with me, uh, who's going to talk about his program as well as a few questions. So, Bill, I'd like to start off with uh, welcome. Hi, Linda. Hi. And uh, so, um, one question that everybody loves to ask. Uh, another constellator is, how do you describe constellations to a stranger? How do I describe constellations to a stranger? I don't know any strangers. No. <laughs> Great. Um, what I usually describe in, in, in very simple terms, because I do work with groups that know nothing about it. Uh, I, I just say that it's, it's, a, it's a way to look at, it's a mul to look at your family system multi-generational issues in your family system, uh, trauma and events that still might be affecting you or might be affecting you at, in this present moment today. And um, through either individual work or group work, um, we kind of look at how it's affecting you and what can you do to uh, help um, ease, your, ease your suffering or ease your pain as a result of, of those um, generational issues. That's pretty much it. I can get lost in the, in the description, so I try to keep it as, as concrete as possible. And then what usually the people do is start to ask more questions and we, can, we, we pull it apart a little bit. Right. But definitely a multi-generational um, systemic therapy. And do you find people are aware that they're in pain or stress? People, most people are aware they're in some sort of pain or stress. They might not be able to identify it. Um, usually they'll use a pretty uh, common terms in the vernacular. I'm anxious or I'm depressed or, you know, I'm sad um, or I'm struggling with this or that. Yeah, and they, but they might not connect it. Usually don't connect it. Other than just the, their family of origin, they might connect it to their mother or they might connect it to the father. That's pretty common. Uh, but they, looking at the bigger system, they won't connect it to the bigger system. Right. Cool. And what insights have you seen uh, using Constellation? Uh, insights. Uh, can you help me with that? What insights? I mean, in terms well, um, of what have I learned? What have, what have you learned? How long have you been doing this? Um, where do you see it going? Uh, well, I've been doing it. I started training in constellations in 2002, so it's been about 13 years. Um, and I, for me, I guess the insights are it's it, it still is a very rapid way of getting to an understanding of the issue that's affecting a person and how quickly um, there's resolution. Or, or there's some movement towards healing in a very short amount of time. Whereas traditional therapies can take much longer. Um, and, and where do I see it going? Well, I've done constellation works in schools uh, and I still think it, that's still a new territory. Uh, working in, in multi-systems, school systems, communicate, communities in the school systems dealing with teachers and the students. Uh, and I, I know friends who are doing work in um, organizations uh, to resolve organizational issues. Uh, and, I, and I have a colleague who's a lawyer actually, and he works in Mexico and he's trying to do this work in the court system, another system. Mm -hmm. So that's one example, or there's many examples, but I think find that fascinating because you know how sometimes systems and institutions can get so entrenched and they don't see they don't see themselves as being entrenched. So I think constellations has is the opportunity to sort of look at some of those uh, broader issues. Definitely. Okay. And the whole inside thing will probably keep crackling as we keep talking. So. Right. Well, the the idea of this program really is to uh, talk about your program coming up Saturday, November fourteenth. Uh, the mysterious life of the heart: passion, love, and longing. Would you tell us what your presentation is going to focus on? Sure, this will be the, about the third or fourth time I've, um, I've done this workshop. 
and really the core of it is, is asking what, what, and the question I ask the group is what's our deepest longing? And the majority of the answer revolve around love. I, I want to not just, I want to find love, not just romantic love. I want to feel love, but the broader sense of love. And I want to feel connected. Um, I mean, as human beings, I think our, our innate nature is to belong. Um, that's the word belonging. And, and that's a big word in constellations is where do I belong? Uh, so what the, what the workshop looks at is um, our heart. What does our heart tell us? What does our heart want? Um, and, and then what is, our, what is our heart afraid of? Or is there fear that's keeping our heart from moving into a, a different space? And what I talk about and what we do in the workshop is look, okay, where is that fear coming from if there is fear? What prevents you from moving towards something that's really your heart's desire? Whether it's a, a partner, whether it's um, a, a new place to live, whether it's uh, starting a family or creating a new business. And so we look at the system. Is there something in the system that, that, that's creating that fear, that's, that's blocking you, uh, or something you're still holding on to. And so the idea of the workshop is using constellations and some rituals is to open that up for the person uh, and to expand and to and perhaps free them to have a new experience. And I talk a lot about the heart. I, I talk about the heart as this uh, giving and receiving sort of uh, part of who we are. And, it's, and really has, the heart has its own, I think, um, way of being in the world. It's, it's a muscle, but it has its own um, nerves and it, and, it, and it controls a lot of how we uh, take in information besides our brain. Uh, and when the heart and brain are obviously working together, things usually go a little smoother. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that people want to be in charge of how they love, you know, like I, I want to love this or I want to love you and I'm going to be in control of how I move towards you. But we're all a little timid when someone wants to love us back. We want it, but it's like, oh, ho, 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 it's a little scary. And I talk about um, love, um, how receiving is an act of love. And that's a big theme in constellations, the balance of giving and receiving. Uh, and so I love that idea of receiving really is an act of love. By taking in something that you're giving to me, I'm showing you how much I love you. Uh, how much I love my children, my friends. But again, that comes, can come up against, ooh, and I want to know what that ooh is, that, when, that little fear. What is that fear? We explore that. We explore that. Um, and I do a few rituals to get the group going. And one of the ones I do, and I don't know if um, you've witnessed it or experienced this, I have people constellate their heart. One of the first things we do. I remember that exercise. Yeah. It was spectacular. Yeah, and I, I still do that, and I actually learned that in a group in Germany from Albrecht Marr, and I keep using it, and it opens up a space, and people, it, it has, sometimes that's all it takes, it has profound movement for people, really profound movement for people. So, and, and I think in the conference, I'm only going to have like an hour and a half, so um, I've done a whole weekend on this theme, and, and, and that's nice, because it gives everybody who comes a chance to do a piece of work. I just was in uh, Toronto and I did, someone counted, I did 26 constellations wow. <laughs> the course of a weekend. Uh, but it's really about exploring that and creating the intimacy, an intimacy not just between a partner, but an intimacy with yourself, being really in touch with yourself and how intimate you are with your being. Um, and we tap on those, we tap on those, on those themes. And, um, uh, yeah, and I'm really excited. I'm, ex I'm excited to talk about this, to present it, to uh, help create the space and maybe open up uh, another way of, of, of seeing and create some new movements for folks. Yes, definitely exciting. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. No, that, uh, that, that heart exercise is very, very nice. Very nice. And uh, I often think about it. And people who've done it, I've been in groups where people have done it before and they'll, they'll, they'll come to one of my groups and they'll do it again and they'll have a whole nother 
um, experience. Some new information will emerge because they're in a different they're in a different place. So I, that's the beauty of it. That's right. Yes. I really like it. And I, I just want to add here, but I don't mean it derogatorily. But I I see there's a um, perhaps a, a, a an opening for men because in our culture they're not really allowed to recognize their heart, their brain, and uh, and yet that's where I see a lot of um, halted movement. Yeah, that's, I think there's some truth to that. Probably less the brain and more the heart. I did a men's ritual a couple of years ago at the Australian Intensive. Uh, and something I'd like to try to explore maybe in the evening in um, San Francisco for men and women. But it's really, it, it was really powerful. And I was really moved myself on how deep the men went. It was, it was heart work. We, it, was, it was a different kind of ritual, but it was really heart work. And uh, it went very deep. And it was in the presence of the women, which is really pretty nice. So, uh, and I think it was something that was needed. It was something that emerged as the course of the week, as the week went by. And um, it, I hear you. Yeah, it's something that I think we as guys don't really, don't really talk too much about or, or I just get. had a conversation this morning with someone like that a, a gentleman yeah. saying he's he's almost afraid to open up even to his spouse it's amazing well that's that's why that I think the ritual the constellating your heart is a safe uh simple yet incredibly powerful beginning if someone has never done it before well tonight we're having a call about what to do in the evening exercises I'll bring it up <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. You go. Great. And um, so your talk is um, on Saturday morning, November 14th, 10.30 to 12. And um, anything else you'd like to add before we sign up? This was kind of quick in a way, <laughs> but it, it was, was very good. Of, it was kind of what? <laughs> kind of quick. <laughs> oh, well, we can make it longer if you want. <laughs> Shorter videos get more views, I think. Shorter videos get more views. Well, I, don't, I was just into, and when I've done this work, the heart work, it, it touches on some trauma for people because a lot of people who've been traumatized, um, either as a child or as an adult, um, it's hard. It, it, the fear is much more intense. Um, and I'll just say something about how I work. I really work to create a safe space. Um, an hour and a half is a short time, but I really work to create a safe space, as you know. Um, so people can move at the pace that's in, that they need to move at, or just witness. Mm -hmm. And as you know, just witnessing is, is, is just as powerful as doing a piece of work. Um, we all get something out of it. That's right. So I take that into consideration, too. People's hearts have been um, sort of shattered. You know, and and um, and yet, I really believe that that the movement is still to to reach out, the movement to belong, the movement to connect, still is there. And the question is, how can people whose hearts have been shattered find a safe place so they can feel they can open a little bit? Not a lot, open. And I, it's one thing I talk about. Uh, I invite people to open their hearts. Not that much, because that's too scary, but just to see what it's like to open your heart a little bit and to feel whatever's happening. Um, and then another thing I talk about, too, since we're uh, on this, is I talk about the idea of sanctuary. Uh, it's a great word. I love the word. But you know, usually when our hearts are shattered, we withdraw. We, we put our hands up and we put a boundary around us. So what I talk about is... Um, instead of withdrawing and hiding and clenching is to think about putting your heart in sanctuary. Because if you think of sanctuary in the old term as people could go into a church to escape the political forces, and yet there's air, there's light coming through, there's uh, food, and they can breathe. And yes, even though there's a, they're in a protective environment, um, they can still sort of, they can still sort of, take in the air and the food and the uh, light. So I just invite people, so next time you're feeling shattered, consider putting your heart in sanctuary as opposed to completely shutting down. That's lovely. Yeah, and just and see what that feels like. And yes, yeah, sometimes we need to withdraw. 
so we can, before we come back, and that's okay. So we, we go over those themes as well. This so. is going to be great. I'm so excited, yes. I'm, I'm excited too. Oh yeah, great. Okay, well thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And, um, We'll be putting this video up somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but probably by the end of the week. It went very well, I think. So, again, thank you, Bill. Thank and you, uh, we'll see you at the conference. I will see you there. All right. Take wow. care. Take care. Bye.